Bria here from Extractuarial, and in today's video, we're going through the eight steps that you need to take in order to become a fully qualified actuary. I'm super excited about this video because I know that becoming an actuary is a long journey and it can be a bit overwhelming. There's a lot to do, so I hope in this video I'll be able to break things down for you so that you understand the steps that you need to take in order to become fully qualified. So let's get into this. Before we get started though, it's really important to understand that you don't necessarily have to do each of these steps in the order that I specify in this video. It's okay if you are possibly already started and you're doing things a little bit differently than what I recommend here. It's really just the best case scenario. So it's ideal to do it this way, but you don't necessarily have to. Okay, so really, now let's get started. Okay, step number one is to get a bachelor's degree. Now, you might have heard before, and I've done a video on it, you don't necessarily need to get a bachelor's degree in order to become a fully qualified actuary, but because employers expect this, I put it in my steps because it really is a requirement. If you want to get hired as an actuary, then you're going to need a bachelor's degree. However, if your plan is not to actually work as an actuary, then you don't really need to get a bachelor's degree because all you need to do is pass the exams and get and pass certain courses and modules online and that sort of thing, and then you can be fully qualified. But if you want to work in an actuarial position, which I'm assuming most people watching this video really want to do that, then you are going to need a bachelor's degree so that employers will actually hire you. Okay, so step one is a bachelor's degree. It really doesn't matter what subject you major in. Most aspiring actuaries will go into something like statistics or math or actuarial science, maybe finance or economics. Anything's fine, but you do need that bachelor's degree. Second is to learn your technical skills or improve your technical skills. So as an actuary, technical skills are really important because you're using them all the time on the job. So employers really want to find candidates that have a solid foundation and very good technical skills. I recommend you spend the most of your time learning Excel and VBA because those two skills in particular are required and loved by almost every actuarial employer. Um, so those are the ones I recommend you focus on. There are other technical skills like Python and SAS and um, R. Those are useful for sure, and some companies will want you to know how to use those, but the majority of companies, it's going, it's going to be hit and miss for the majority of companies. Some companies might want them and others won't. So the best use of your time, in my opinion, is to spend it using Excel, or learning Excel and VBA. And then later on, once you have more time, or maybe while well, you're looking for your first job and that sort of stuff, and you really want to improve your chances even more, then you can start learning the other different programming languages and other things like that. But for right now, when you're still at the second stage of your actuarial journey, just focus on Excel and VBA. Number three, step three, is to pass actuarial exams. So I'm sure you're aware, hopefully, or maybe you're not. You don't have to pass all 10 actuarial exams in order to start working at, in an actuarial role. So if you just pass two or three exams, usually that's going to make you a good candidate for actuarial positions. And then you can pass all the other ones while you're still working or while you're working. Usually the first three exams that you're going to pass are exam P, FM, and IFM. Exam P stands for probability, FM stands for financial mathematics, and IFM stands for investments and financial markets. So those are the three exams that you're going to want to focus on because those are the ones that are recognized by both the Society of Actuaries and the Casualty Actuarial Society. Now these are two different actuarial organizations in Canada and the US. So if you're interested in knowing more about those, I will link a video up above um, telling you the differences between the two societies. After you've passed some exams, then you're going to start looking for your first full-time job and you're going to get a full-time job. Like I said, it's possible to get an actuarial job even with just two or three exams passed. It's rare to get a job with just one exam passed, so you're probably going to have to pass more like I recommended, um, but it's certainly possible. You never know. 
Um, I do usually recommend that after your first exam passed, you go start applying to actuarial jobs because you just never know, you might be able to get one. Those are the first four steps of your actuarial journey, bachelor's degree, technical skills, exams, and then getting your first full-time job. Now, even these four steps alone are very, very difficult. And at the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you how I can actually help you through those first four stages of your actuarial journey. I have a really, really awesome resource that I know is going to help you um, and just clear up any confusion you have, give you the steps that you uh, need, like step-by-step, step, even more detailed than what I've gone through here. Next, after you get your first actuarial job, then you're going to start studying for more exams and you're going to get your associateship. You're going to become an associate of either the Society of Actuaries or the Casualty Actuarial Society. Now, there are kind of two levels of actuary. There's associateship and the, or an associate, and then there's a fellow. So in this video, we're talking about how to become a fully qualified actuary, and that's a fellow. So the fellow is the second level actuary. Associate is the mid-level actuary. So um, that's kind of the next stage in your career after you get your first job, is you're going to reach associateship. And just to get there, there are some more exams you have to pass. There are some online courses to take and modules to pass and those kinds of things. Other than the exams, the other requirements are fairly easy to complete. They just take some time to get through them all. So you reached associateship now, and then you are going to start moving up in your company. So once you reach this level, you become really valuable to actuarial employers because you've got some work experience, you've passed a bunch of exams, and you can really start contributing a lot more to your company. So because of that, you're probably going to start moving up and get higher level positions and maybe even more and probably more responsibilities. So this can be a really exciting time in your career um, because you are learning a lot more and you're getting pay raises, a lot, a lot higher pay. You might be managing some other entry level actuaries and that sort of thing. You're going to start passing more actuarial exams. So between associateship and fellowship, there are three actuarial exams that you need to pass. So you just need to start working away at those exams. Those ones are really, really difficult. They tend to focus more on the, theory, the, the theoretical, I don't think I said that right, but I think you know what I mean, Theoret, theoretical? Anyway, they, come from, they concentrate a bit more on that rather than all the math. Whereas the earlier exams, they focus more on the math. It's just a whole bunch of math problems and stuff. Whereas the later exams, uh, they are a lot more written answer. You have to think logically through the theory of insurance and the concepts there. So those exams are quite different than the earlier ones. And for most people, they're a lot harder. So they take a lot of time to study for, even more than the earlier exams. Um, but they're very interesting and directly apply to what you're working on. Once you've passed those three exams, there are a few more things you have to do. Again, really uh, modules online and maybe a course or two that you have to pass. But once you get through those, you are a fully qualified actuary and you are a fellow. So you've really reached your goal there of becoming a fellow. Um, and that's the journey. You should, <laughs> that's pretty much your whole journey that you're going to go through in order to become a fully qualified actuary. Usually this whole thing takes people about five to 10 years to complete. Some people never get up to fellowship, um, like me. I never even finished my fellowship, but I was still had a great time working in actuarial positions and I moved up in the company and all that sort of thing. So um, really, it comes down to what you want at that time. You should certainly go into it uh, thinking that you're going to become a fellow, but if things just don't work out and you decide you don't want to go all that way, for most, most of the time, that's totally fine. Companies will be okay with it, um, but there might be some companies that aren't. Anyway, um, I guess that's something that you would have to think about at the time when it comes up, but just so you know, when you start this journey, you should go into it assuming that you're going to become a fellow, but if you end up not becoming a fellow, usually that's okay. Like you'll make it work. Something will work out for you. A company will hire you that's okay with you not becoming a fellow and all that sort of stuff. 
So let's go through those eight stages again, and then I'm going to show you that really awesome resource that I have for you to help you go from the very beginning stages of your actuarial journey to getting your first full-time job. Step number one is bachelor's degree. Step number two is technical skills. Step number three is passing exams. Step number four is getting your first full-time job. Step number five is getting your associateship. Step number six is to move up in your company and, and gain more responsibilities. Step number seven is to pass more actuarial exams. And then step number eight, is to become a fellow. Those are the eight stages. Now, let me tell you where you can go to get one month free in my Actuary Accelerator community. This is what I was telling you about the resource that is going to help you move through the first four stages of becoming an actuary. So it will help you with the technical skills, it will help you with passing exams, and it will help with getting your first full-time job. Okay, I'm going to share my screen with you now. So, this is inside the Actuary Accelerator community. I'm going to go through really quickly some of the things that I know you are going to love. So first off is this five phases of your actuarial journey. And really this is my Actuary Accelerator plan. I tell you step by step by step by step in much more detail than I've done here about how to become a really good candidate for actuarial positions and get your first full-time job. Um, if you haven't heard already, the market in the actuarial field is fairly competitive. So in order to give yourself the best chance of getting an actuarial job, I suggest going through the stages that I recommend in here in order to just gradually improve yourself even more so that you can be a really good candidate for actuarial positions when you start looking for jobs. So in the Actuary Accelerator plan, you're going to get step-by-step -step advice so you know exactly what to do. Plus, there are tons of modules in here that will help you through each of those phases. So you can be in the beginner phase, the rising candidate phase, the intermediate phase, or then you can become a top candidate. And all of these different phases have resources associated with them that you can go through to improve your chances of getting an actuarial job. And they'll really just guide you through this whole process so you don't even have to think about it. You're just going to know exactly what you need to do, how to prioritize your time, and what to focus on at each stage of your actuarial journey. So there's that. You're going to get all these exam resources, so how to prepare for your actuarial exams. There's or that's a really in-depth video on how to create a study strategy to pass actuarial exams. There's a video here all about my recommended study materials. I show you inside so you can actually see what they're like. There's a math Q&A forum here in case you get stuck on math problems while you're studying for your exams. We also talked about learning technical skills, like specifically Excel and VBA. So there are eight, there are actually nine sessions in here all about Excel and VBA so that you can learn those from the very beginning all the way to advanced Excel and into some beginner VBA. There are also tons of job resources here. So when you actually go to start looking for your first full-time job, you're going to have a resume course here to help you create a resume that really makes you stand out. There's some LinkedIn networking courses here, interviewing courses, and all that sort of stuff to really help you excel on this journey and reach your actuarial goal as quickly as possible. Now, if you'd like to join, you can get one month for free. I'm giving out 200 one month uh, coupon codes. So in order to get that, Right down below, go to the, the link for the Actuary Accelerator community. You're going to come to a page that looks like this. You are welcome to read through all that, but when you're done, find a button that says join the AAC now, and then you're going to come to a page that looks like this. It's going to give you some more details about the Actuary Accelerator community, because after your first month, it's $39 per month. I do want you to know that. So you will be able to get one month for free, and then $39 per month after. However, you can cancel any time, so if you decide that you don't want to keep your membership after your first month, that's totally fine, you can cancel. It's super easy to do that. On day 27, I'm going to send you a reminder email just so you know your first month is almost up, and at that time, you can decide whether you want to remain in the Actuary Accelerator community or if you want to cancel your membership. After you've read that, you can click join the community. 
and you're going to come to a page that looks like this. Now, here's where I'm going to give you the coupon code. This is where I'm going to give you the super special coupon code. Right here, you can put steps 200, and then that's going to give you your first 31 days for free. And then after that, it lets you know that it's going to be $39 per month. You'll also see that your first month is only $0. So once you go through that, you can fill out your payment information here. You can put, go through PayPal or Stripe uh, for your credit card if you'd prefer, and then click become a member. And then you're going to get access to everything that I've shown you here in the Actuary Accelerator community, plus way more. I'm constantly adding resources in here. We do a monthly live Q&A session with me so I can answer your actuary questions. And there's also a WhatsApp group that you can join where we're talking all about actuary stuff. And I'm in there answering questions. Other members are in there asking questions giving answers, all that sort of stuff. So it's really an amazing group to be in if you are really serious about becoming an actuary and want to give yourself the best possible chance of getting your first full-time job. Okay, that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.